Amen. <laughs> anyway, praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 14. Back to the serious here. Verse 6. Then Jonathan said to the young man who bore his honor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. So his armor bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Go then, here I am with you according to your heart. Jonathan said, Very well, let us cross over to these men and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place and not go to them. But if they say to us, come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand, and this will be a sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, look, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they've hidden. The men of the garrison called to Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us and we'll show you something. Or another translation is, we'll teach you something. <laughs> We're going to give you a lesson. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me, for the Lord has delivered them into our hands. And Jonathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor bearer after him, and they fell before Jonathan. And as he came after him, his armor bearer killed them. That first slaughter, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20 men within half an acre of land. And there was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among the people. The garrison and the raiders also trembled, and the earthquake, so that it was a very great trembling. The watchmen of Saul and Geba of Benjamin looked, and there was the multitude melting away. And they went here and there. And Saul said to the people, who were with them. Now call the roll and see who has gone from us. And when they did, they found that Jonathan and his armor bearer were not there. Father, thank you for the Holy Ghost. Touch us in a wonderful way, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad you're in God's house today? Amen. Aren't you glad you're starting out the new year right? Amen. Come on, everybody say, I'm starting the new year right. Yeah, you're going to have a better year this year. God's going to do good things for us. I want to preach today on the absurd faith of Jonathan. I was thinking of a word that would fit on a man who would be so possessed to think that him and his armor bearer could come against a whole army. What kind of guy does that? An absurd Proposition. I looked up the word absurd. It means ridiculous. <laughs> Unreasonable. Having no rational thought. That's what absurd means. Jonathan didn't have any rational thought. Jonathan was ridiculous. And he was unreasonable. But he did the work of God in the process. And if you are going to be successful and victorious in this new year, you're going to have to be absurd. God is not calling for the game as usual. He's not calling for you to kick the can down the road. He's not calling for us to do the same old, same old. God is going to push us and call us to absurdity. God's going to push you to ridiculous conclusions. He's going to give you so much faith, you're going to think you can whip a mountain. He's going to give you so much joy that none of your relatives can take it from you. He's going to give us so much confidence that we don't care if a depression comes. God's going to feed and house his people. Somebody say amen. amen. I think of the word absurd, ridiculous, unreasonable, not rational. And I think about the day we're living in. The idea that they could put a womb in a man and make him bear children. Absurd. The idea that little boys and girls need to be taught critical race theory and 
showed that they can change their gender. Absurd. Absurd. That God didn't know what he was doing when he made male and female. God didn't know what he was doing when he said one man and one woman. God didn't know what he was doing when he put this planet together and they're shaking their fist in God's face saying, we'll rewrite the laws. We'll do it our way. Absurd. But I can tell you that God wants us on the other end of the spectrum to be absurd this new year. He wants some radical people to have some radical faith to believe for some great things, to take the limits and the reins off of their own life and off of God and believe for the supernatural. He is a supernatural God. But one of the key elements of this story is, is that all the power that God had, the fist of heaven that came out of glory and hit the ground and shook that whole nation of of soldiers, the Philistines, so that they got so confused they turned their swords on each other and ran away. All of that was hinged on one young man and his armor bearer saying, hey, I got an idea. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. Let's do it. Come on. I mean, people have absurd ideas all the time. They think they're going to go to Vegas and hit the jackpot. Absurd. You're going to lose. Come on. People think they're going to take cocaine and make themselves happy. Absurd. People think they're going to hop around in people's beds and that's going to give them fulfillment. No, it's called venereal disease. It's absurd. Nobody, nobody. But God's people can be absurd and be blessed. God didn't respond to the need. Notice that Saul is setting up in the tent on the other side of the mountain. And over here on this mountain at a deep bluff between them is the Philistines and here's Saul. Where did we see this before? With David and Goliath. What was Saul doing? Setting in his tent, twiddling his thumbs listening to somebody cuss him for 40 days. What's he doing here? They're at an impasse. There's no victory. They're in no man's land. They've got a large enemy bigger than they are facing them and they're sitting around chewing gum, playing video games, waiting for God to do something. God doesn't respond to your need God doesn't respond to pain. God doesn't respond to your emergency. God responds to your faith. Jonathan had the faith of God. And I thought as the Lord gave me this, where in the world did Jonathan get such faith? He didn't get it from his dad. His dad was useless. His dad was full of flesh and rebellion. His dad was insane in the end. Where did he get it? His best friend. Who was that? David. They were so close, they made a compact, a covenant between themselves. That they were blood brothers. They loved each other. Where did Jonathan get his faith? From who he hung out with. <laughs> Come on. Show me five of your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Come on. Show me the people you hang out with and I'll tell you where you're going. Are you going to go to the streets? Are you going to go to hell? Are you going to go to heaven? I don't know about you, but I want to hang out with people that are on their way to glory. I want to hang out with people that are on this narrow path and are committed to stay on it regardless of what the consequences are. Give me the righteous. Don't give me heathen. Don't give me these people that are full of Satan and rebellion. Give me the righteous. Let me die with the godly. Hallelujah. Put me in a church where people love God, where I can have fellowship and get strength in my life, where I can find out who I am and I can grow and become what I need to be. 
be because I'm hanging out with people that are going to heaven. I'm hanging out with somebody that knows how to rebuke the devil, that knows how to speak in tongues, that knows what warfare is all about. They know what victory looks like. They know what the Holy Ghost feels like. They know what it is to be healed. Put me around somebody that knows God. I want to hang out with people that know the Lord. I need strength. I don't need to hang out with some fool that's going to hell. There's a thousand paths that go to hell. There's only one that goes to heaven. Put me with the righteous. Give me somebody that's got something on their phone besides hip hop. Give me somebody that's got some Chicago Mass Choir Holy Ghost praise music. Hallelujah. Let me listen to your song list on your phone and I'll tell you where you're going. Oh, I didn't plan on preaching this good. This is too good for first Sunday. Come on. We might as well say it like it is. You are what you think. You are what you read. You are what comes in the eye gate, what comes in the ear gate. Hallelujah. Put your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Well, pastor, I would have been here, but I've been sick. Well, you can turn on the TV. I mean, you can turn on the internet and watch us on YouTube. You can get sermons in the middle of the week. You can get help. You can get strength. Get you somebody that knows God and listen to them and get ministered to. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I need that and you need that. You need strength during the week, not just on Sunday. Feed your mind, your heart, your spirit with the things of God and you'll have absurd faith. And Jonathan hung out with his best friend David and he got this giant killer attitude. <laughs> he got this nothing can stop me. He got this idea, hey, with faith in God, you can do anything. And God responds to faith. And I can see that he's sat there for a month and waited and there's an impasse and there's no victory and his daddy's not doing anything. So Jonathan says to his armor bearer, I tell you what, let's make something happen today. I feel like kicking the devil. Come on, somebody say amen. When are you gonna let the devil, make the devil quit intimidating you and harassing you? Well, the devil, he's been after me all week. Why don't you get after the devil? Why don't you turn the tables on the enemy? Why don't you bless the Lord at all times? Why don't you kick him out of your house? Why don't you kick him out of your mind? Why don't you fill your mind with the things of God? Get aggressive for God. Quit sitting around letting your mind be a playground for demonic activity. Amen. You are what you think. And this Jonathan said to we're going to make something happen today. God's going to do something. I'm tired of sitting here in no man's land. Let me ask you, in 2023, it'll be what you make of it. And if you're tired of living in no man's land and no victory and in compromise, it's up to you. It's not up to God. And it's not up to me, the preacher. I can preach it, but you gotta live it. I can preach it, but you gotta do it. If you keep doing the same thing in 2023 that you did in 2022, guess what? You're going to get the same results. How many, somebody here want different results for this new year? Somebody here wants something to break free and break loose and you want some victory? You want to go forward? You want some peace? Then it's up to you. It wasn't up to heaven. It wasn't up to angels. It wasn't up to God. It was up to somebody down there in the conflict to say, hey, God's with us. Let's do something. Jonathan said, let's show ourselves. Woo. That's more than his daddy did. That's more than any other soldier did. Let's show ourselves. Let's go over there and climb up where, the, where their outpost is and let's just show ourselves to them, see what they do. And if they say, come up to us, that's a sign that God has given us the victory over this whole army. And if they say, we'll come down to you, uh-oh. Come on. What if they say, we'll come down to you? Then it's curtains. They're going to kill us. 
I'm going to go to heaven early. You know, that's the reason nobody moves is because everybody is protecting self. Ooh, I love me. You look in the morning every mirror and you just love you to death. I love you. I cherish you. I'm going to protect you at any cost. You're first. You're number one. You're the God of my life. You need a crown. People don't love you as much as they should. If they knew you better, they'd love you more. You are the best thing that's ever happened. Your mother gave birth to a beauty. Yeah, that's us. We all born loving ourselves. That's us. But if you're going to conquer for God, you got to get rid of that. And you got to say with the Hebrew boys, you want us to bow? We're not going to. If we die in the furnace, we die in the furnace. We're 20 years old, but if we die, we're going to die loyal to God. Daniel, quit praying. No, I'm going to keep praying. Then we're going to throw you in the lion's den. Okay. If I'm a meal for the lions, then I'll be with the Lord. We've got to quit loving ourselves. And we've got to put God first. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, let's show ourselves. Come on, everybody. Put your hand up. Say this. In 2023, I'm going to show myself. Get ready, devil. I'm going to show up, and I'm going to challenge you. And God is going to give me victory. Amen. God wants you to show up in 2023. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sure enough, those men laughed, said, look. The Israelis, they're hiding in the holes. They've come out of their hole in the ground like a rabbit. Come up, boys. We'll teach you something. We're going to show you a lesson. What were they going to do? Chop their heads off with the swords. And it says that Jonathan had to crawl on his hands and feet. He was so steep. Jonathan crawled all on his hands and feet and got to the top. And the Spirit of God came on those soldiers and they fell over. And his armor bearer killed 20 of them. When God has people that will show up with their faith, he'll do the battle. He'll knock them down. He'll send an earthquake. He'll give the victory. You're not going to have to do anything great. You just got to show up with your faith. Come on. Show up with your faith. Show up with your faith. Stand up, brother. Amen. Tell the devil, not here you don't. That's right. I'm going to have victory. Not here. You're not going to conquer me this year. I'm going to walk in victory. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. He said, "For it, and nothing restrains the Lord for saving by many or by few. We'll show ourselves. They said, come up after us. In verse 12. They fell before Jonathan in verse 13. Verse 14 says they killed 20 men. Verse 15 says, God sent a trembling and an earthquake, and he set the whole army in fear. How many of you believe God's big enough to put people in fear? How many of you think God still controls this planet? He can shake it if he wants to. He can bring victory anytime he wants to. He can use any method he wants to. He said for revelation during the tribulation, he's got hailstones stored up that he's going to throw on the earth. They weigh 75 pounds apiece. How'd you like to get hit with those? It'll tear up everything. Hallelujah. God got in the battle. When Joshua was fighting the Midianites, God got so excited I could see him standing on the throne. Go, boys, go. Go, go, go. 
All of heaven was cheering them. They're going, they're fighting the Lord's battle and God is just killing more of them than they are. And then finally God said, send some hornets. And an angel said, hornets go. And these hornets come and start attacking Joshua's enemies. It says God killed more with that, ran off more than Joshua could do. Why? Because God got in the battle. Let heaven go to work for you in 2023. Let heaven stand up and cheer because your faith shows up. All, we're, all we do is we tell how bad the conditions are. We report on how bad the battle is. We talk about our problems. God's looking for somebody that'll believe him. They'll be absurd in their faith. Absurd faith. Ridiculous, unreasonable to assume that two men could change a whole nation's battle. The whole thing says that they begin to melt away, melt away, melt away. And Saul standing on the other side of the ravine looking said, hey, 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 what's happening? What's all the screaming? How come all that enemies run? What happened to the Philistines? They're melting away. He says, do quick, do a roll call. They do a roll call. Who's missing? Who's missing? Your son, Jonathan, and his armor bearer. That little old young whippersnapper can do that? No, but God, honoring his faith, can do anything. Come on. God won't honor your need, but he'll honor your faith. Hallelujah. You're going to see victory this year. Somebody say amen. amen. And then... I felt the Lord tell me to say this. In Judges chapter 4, if you want to turn with me to Judges chapter 4 and verse 6, this is the same thought. It's just not a man, it's a woman. It's the same devil a different army, different faces, different names, but the same conflict. And it says in verse 6 that Deborah called for Barak and said to him, As not the Lord God of Israel commanded, go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor, take with you 10,000 men, and go against and deploy against Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and the Lord will deliver you into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you're taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. God not only uses men who ought to be the leader, who ought to stand in front, who ought to be the protector, who ought to defend, who ought to stand up for God, but if there's no man handy, guess what? God is no respecter, and the woman will do just fine, and sometimes better. Hallelujah. And God's going to raise up an army of women. This last day move that is coming of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God, the revival of God, I believe in many arenas and in many ways is going to be headed up by women. There are so many men that won't take their rightful position. They are cowards and they are lazy and they're spiritually delinquent and they don't have the strength and the courage they ought to have or the intestinal character and fortitude but God has put something within a woman you know she bears children she has to raise children she has to put up with and there's a tenacity that's built into a woman that men don't have and they'll grind it out and they'll push it through and they'll stand their ground and they'll believe God and they're more patient because they've had to put up with you all these years Women, I'm, I'm pinning it on you today. You ought to appreciate what I'm saying here. But it's true. It's, it's the difference in the nature. Women are more persevering. And they're more patient. Huh? So it falls into a natural advantage in the things of God. 
And the Lord sold that army, Sisera and his armory, army, into the hand of a woman. So I say to the women, don't worry. You don't need a good man. You already got a great God. You got a great God. And you can do anything that anybody else can do. And God is no respecter of persons. And God will honor you as much as anybody else. God will use you on any and all levels in his house. This nonsense that women can't be used in the ministry. They didn't ever read the book of Acts where one preacher named Philip had four daughters that prophesied and preached. Forget that. Oh, couldn't be. Oh, God is no respecter. And God will use you as much as anybody else. So be strong in the Lord. Use absurd faith. Believe that God can do it. And God will do it. Somebody say amen. And I love the conclusion of Sisera. The woman Deborah went out and she won the battle for Barak. And the armies were victorious. And in verse 17 of Judges 4, it says that Sisera fled away on foot and he found a tent. And he went in and he said to this woman, J.L., he said, oh, I'm, I, I'm worn out and I'm tired and I'm running for my life. She said, oh, please, let me give you shelter. Yeah, right. She put him in the tent, put some blankets on top of him, he was thirsty. She fed him some milk. Here you go, buddy. Here's you some milk. She was giving aid to the enemy. She laid him down. No doubt he laid in her lap. Oh, everything's well. He goes to sleep because he's worn out. She gets a tent stake, puts it right on the temple, gets a big old wooden hammer. Boom! And she drives that stake through his head into the ground. And Deborah comes up, said, we're looking for the king. J.L. said, come, I got him. I nailed him this morning. <laughs> I really nailed him. I nailed him to the ground. He said, boy, that's bloody. This thing is about blood. It costs the blood of Jesus to buy your soul a passport to heaven. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the cost is. It costs you to get to heaven. It's a cheap ticket. Because Jesus did the heavy lifting. Somebody say praise the Lord. So another woman won another victory. Deborah won the battle with the army. And Jael won the battle with the king. So the women brought the victory. God's victory is with women. As much as with men, for God is no respecter. What God wants us to do is exercise our faith for 2023. Be in this seek week. In another week, be here. Be here every night. Fill out your card and be a part of what God is doing. Let's stand together this morning.